Hello, Jimmy here. Today we're going to change pace a little bit and I'm going to redo one of my first videos. In fact, I think it might be my first video where we talk about pirate gravestones and how you've probably never actually seen one. So a lot of you guys might know that my academic work throughout my career has been focused on gravestones. Why gravestones, I hear you ask? Because I think they're cool and interesting, I reply. And there we will leave it. Piracy is a crime, and piracy has always been a crime. Even privateering is a crime unless you're talking to the person who gave you the letter of mark that allows you to become a privateer. Nobody liked pirates in the golden age of piracy. Piracy was not a romantic notion. You only have to look at the cover of this book. It's a Dutch book, the English translation of which is The American Sea Rovers, to figure that out. It effectively has pictures of pirates killing and looting innocent people. Up in the top here, we've got pirates roasting somebody over an open fire, murdering the native population of a Caribbean island, and engaging in violent acts of theft and murder. These aren't Captain Jack Sparrow, these are monsters. They weren't nice people the majority of the time, and we have to also remember that some pirates, including Henry Morgan, Captain Morgan's rum fame, engaged in slavery. The slave trade was a big part of the economy of the Caribbean in the golden age of piracy, in the latter half of the 17th and the start of the 18th century, and these people made money however they could. And if that involved taking human beings and selling them, they would do that. Henry Morgan was a plantation owner after he retired from piracy and became a legitimate politician. Not great. Gravestones. Where do pirates get buried? Well, that kind of depends. First of all, we're going to talk about pirates who don't get caught. So, if a pirate doesn't get caught, and these pirates are in the minority, and I mean the tiny minority, most pirates had very short careers as pirates because as soon as you're a pirate, Every major power's navy has carte blanche to kill you, cut off your head, and display it on the bowsprit of their vessel, which is what happened to Blackbeard when Lieutenant Maynard decapitated him, killed his crew, and then he displayed Blackbeard's head on the bowsprit of his vessel. If you were not caught, chances are it's because people didn't know you were a pirate. And if people didn't know you were a pirate, you sure as hell weren't going to put famous pirate who never got caught on your gravestone. Why? Because that is an admission of criminality, and because it means that you probably wouldn't get permission from the local vicar of your local church to put that on your gravestone. So, pirates who didn't get caught probably didn't have so-called pirates' gravestones. They might have a ship on their gravestone, but then again, so could any merchant, sailor, or naval seaman. Lots of people have ships, anchors, and various other things like that on their gravestone to imply that they had a career on the sea. That doesn't make it a pirate's gravestone. Does a pirate necessarily have to have a Jolly Roger? Well, no. Lots of pirates in the golden age of piracy did fly a Jolly Roger. And a Jolly Roger isn't just a skull and bones. This is one of Edward Lowe's flags. Here's another one of Edward Lowe's flags. Here's another one of Edward Lowe's flags. Here's one of Black Bart's flags. And if you're wondering what the letters stand for, it stands for a Barbadian's head and a Mauritian's head not nice people. We're going to talk about the flags a little bit more later, but if a pirate didn't get caught, lived to a ripe old age, and actually died a quote-unquote honest man or woman, their gravestone is going to reflect the idea that they were a quote-unquote honest man or woman, because, and I cannot emphasize this enough, it is not up to you what goes on your gravestone in the 17th, 18th, and 19th century. It is up to the church. And if the church sees that you want to put renowned pirate on your gravestone, questions will be asked. Questions such as, why don't you look for another effing graveyard to bury yourself in? What about pirates who did get caught? Well, generally speaking, a pirate who got caught was executed. And unfortunately, most executed criminals in the British Empire and in the French Empire would be displayed. And I don't mean that they would just be, you know, put in a cage for people to look at. I mean they would be displayed after they had been killed. Like Captain Kidd. Captain Kidd was hanged, and then his body was displayed in a gibbet. This is basically, I mean it is a cage of a type, 
that is made of iron that closely fits around your body so that as your body rots to skeletal form, people can see what happens if you engage in criminal activity. Back in the 16th century in Germany, a pirate and his crew would be publicly beheaded in front of a crowd. These are not people who are romanticised and respected. So these aren't romanticised uh, salty sea dogs who will sweep you off your feet and rip your bodice off. These are murderous, rapacious villains who will be executed and their bodies will be displayed and then their bones will probably just be thrown back into the sea or in a midden, never to be commemorated. They certainly won't get a nice gravestone in a churchyard that says, here lies Captain X, notorious pirate skull and bones. That's just not how the world worked, and it's not how the world works now. Chances are even today, if you're a pirate, you'll die a violent death on the sea, and your body will end up in Davy Jones's locker. You might get a gravestone at home if your family has enough money, but it's certainly not going to say, here lies Jack, he was a pirate. Again, because the vicar would not accept that. So, where does the idea of a pirate gravestone come from? Well, the idea of a pirate gravestone comes from this damn thing. This is a memento mori. And the tradition of the memento mori goes back a very long way. Back in ancient Rome, if a successful general earned a triumph by defeating lots of the enemy in battle in a foreign province, he would be allowed to ride into Rome at the head of his army on a chariot. Behind him, a slave would whisper, Remember, you must die. Memento mori. Memento mori then becomes a really popular thing in Christianity, in Judaism, and in various other religions as a way of saying, remember, you're going to die. Live a good life. Avoid sin. Avoid the pleasures of the flesh. Because one day, you'll just be a skull. You'll just be a skeleton. And your immortal soul is what's going to live on. So, live a good life. Read the Bible. Go to heaven. That's basically what this thing is implying. This motif gets really popular in the late medieval and early modern period, so we're talking about the 16th and 17th centuries, and it develops from the medieval danse macabre. And the danse macabre often shows a skeleton or death with his scythe leading a dance of people who will die, and that includes everybody. So you'll usually have peasants and then bishops and maybe even a cardinal or the pope and kings and queens and princes all dancing behind death. And the obvious message here is, it doesn't matter how much money you earn, it doesn't matter how popular or how fantastically wealthy you are in life, in death, your bones in a grave. And that's where the Memento Mori comes from. You see tons of Memento Mori paintings or Vanitas paintings in 16th and 17th century art. Here are a couple of really cool ones from the Netherlands. You also see them represented in woodworking, in statuary, in big graves and in gravestones, and they become super popular all over Europe and in places where Europeans end up, which includes places like the Caribbean. They become really, really popular on gravestones as a reminder to people looking at the grave that one day you too will look like this. Look at this gravestone, see a skull and crossbones, and think, aha, I have to live a healthy, sin-free, pious life so that once I am in a grave like this, I will be confident that I am going to go to heaven. That is what the Skull and Crossbones means. However, it also means death. Literally, this flag means death. You know the HBO production, Our Flag Means Death? That's because their flag, the Skull and Bones, the Memento Mori, the Remember You Will Die, literally means death. That is why this is associated with pirates. It's not a death symbol because of pirates. It's a pirate symbol because it symbolises death. People see it and get it the wrong way around. Because nowadays it's associated with the Jolly Roger. It's associated with Blackbeard. It's associated with all of those Golden Age of Hollywood movies about piracy and people going ah and speaking with terrible Cornish accents, even though Henry Morgan was from Cardiff and definitely didn't speak like that. This symbol is death. It is a reminder that death comes to all of us. And that is a very powerful thing for a pirate, because as soon as you run that up the flagpole, it means death is coming for you. You are going to die, is what this means. 
So when we see it on gravestones, it doesn't mean, aha, this person is a pirate. It means, aha, this person, or whoever commissioned the gravestone, is probably somebody who thinks about death and living a good life before they get there. Let's look at a couple of examples of so-called pirate graves. So here's one that the Smithsonian Magazine actually uses as the header of one of their articles on Jewish pirates in the Caribbean. And it's a skull and crossbones, a memento mori on a gravestone with Hebrew writing on it. Obviously a pirate grave, right? Why would a Jewish person, person, why would a Jewish person have a memento mori? Well, memento mori were popular in the Jewish community as well in the early modern period. Here's one from 1681 painted in the Netherlands with a Hebrew inscription at the top and funkily a Spanish inscription at the bottom. So Almost certainly, if any of my friends or subscribers can read Hebrew, we're not going to get any trace of piracy on this gravestone. It's unlikely this person was a pirate. It is unfortunately likely that this person was involved in the slave trade. Here's another gravestone. This one is from the so-called Pirate Cemetery on Ile Sainte Marie, which is near Madagascar. We're going to dig into this particular one. So this gravestone belongs to a man called Joseph Pierre Le Chartier, and Monsieur Le Chartier came from France, he was born in the 1780s, he came over to Ile Sainte Marie, and he died there in the 1830s. This gravestone is reported all over the internet as belonging to a pirate. We don't know what ship he was on, we don't know what he did, but he was definitely a pirate because this is the pirate graveyard of the pirate island. Ile Sainte Marie was used as a pirate haven. It was a haven for pirates up to 1719. Then, it was contested by the British and the French for the next hundred years. This man arrived on this island on a ship called La Normande. How do we know? Because it says it right on the gravestone. And if we check out the source material that we have available to us, we find out that La Normande left from France to go to Ile Sainte Marie as a colonizing ship. Several hundred people volunteered to go to this island to colonise it in the name of the French Empire, because at that point, the British Empire was also eyeing it up. Monsieur Le Chartier came along on La Normande, not as a pirate, but as a colonist. He died on the island in the 1830s, and his friend Urin, I'm not sure if that's a first name or a last name, made a gravestone for him with a memento mori, with these fun little ghosty sperm things, which I've seen on another couple of Memento Mori. Here's a fun one. This is a fun one. Look at that. An actual, like, needlework Memento Mori. They're very rare, um, with little spermy ghosty things. So, this is not a pirate's grave. This is the grave of a pious Frenchman. Sorry. As for the rest of the gravestones, well, the last pirate presence was expunged from here in 1719, and I can tell you, as a gravestone archaeologist, none of these graves is from earlier than the very back end of the 18th century, and probably none of them is earlier than 19th century, so it's not a pirate graveyard. It's a graveyard for colonists, people who came to this island to try and claim it in the name of La Belle France. There's almost certainly not a single pirate buried under one of these gravestones. There may be pirates buried there from earlier on, but it's highly unlikely they actually have pirate written on their gravestone. So what about this gravestone? Well, this gravestone must belong to notorious French pirate Olivier Levasseur, because Olivier Levasseur, as we all know, was a notorious pirate who flew a Jolly Roger. And on the cross right here, we have a skull and bones, definitive proof if ever it were needed. Unfortunately, Levasseur's Jolly Roger was actually this, a full skeleton on a white background. This is just an anonymous unnamed person's grave that people have assumed is a pirate grave, even though it's almost definitely not a pirate grave. It's not a pirate grave. No one's name is actually inscribed on that cross. People have just taken it and run with it. Probably to make more money at the local tavern. So what about all of these other gravestones with skulls and with crossbones and with skellingjuns on them and all of that kind of crap? No, they're just symbols of death. The symbols of death that we find on gravestones were taken by people whose livelihoods involved inspiring fear of death. Our flag means death. These symbols, these symbols of death, our flag means death, all of that is true, but our flag means death 
Because these symbols have meant death for thousands of years, a skull and a skeleton have represented dead human beings for pretty much as long as human beings have known that you turn into a skeleton after you die. They don't mean death because pirates. They're pirate flags because they mean death. You've probably never seen a pirate gravestone. Oh, you might have seen a modern gravestone to a pirate, but you've probably never seen a gravestone put up for a pirate by a pirate at the time the pirate was active. If you see what I mean. If you think you have found a pirate gravestone, do a bit of research and do a bit of digging into the person actually buried there, because depending on the religion and depending on the place where you are, calling somebody a pirate can be a real insult. So do be careful with flinging that word around. Remember, these were murderous criminals, not Captain Jack Sparrow. If you think you found a pirate gravestone, you probably haven't. Thank you so much. I'm a minor. Thank you once again. I really hope you enjoyed this. Thank you to all of my lovely patrons. Thank you to the people buying me coffee. Thank you to people asking me to do stuff like make merch and podcasts and do more things. It's, it's kind of mind-blowing to a person like me that people actually want me to do more stuff. So thank you very much indeed for that. It means the world to me. You guys are all wonderful. And Tanatronissa. Until the next time. Oh.